There's data everywhere. A lot of it is available on the internet. We're going to look in this video at getting some data from the internet, processing it so that we can use it in R, and then discovering some interesting connections in R. So I'm going to do a Google search for Spurs stats, see if we can find something about the Spurs basketball team. There's the 2014-2015 season. Let's look at some information there. Tells a little bit about uh, the roster and some games that were played. Oh, let's look at this one, the totals. Notice here, if we, if we hover over the names in this header, the age of the player, the games, the games started, and so on, and up to the personal fouls and the points earned during that season. And even better than that, look at this. We can export that file. We can download it as a downloadable file suitable for Excel. Actually, that file is going to be a comma-separated variable file. So I'm going to export that file. It's showing us what the comma-separated variable file looks like, and it's been, uh, been downloaded to my computer. I'm going to move that to a directory where I can work on it. So here it is. It's sitting in, uh, in this particular directory. I'm going to open this file and look at it for just a minute. I'm using OpenOffice, but you could have opened the file in Excel or any other spreadsheet. It's a comma-separated variable file, and all spreadsheets can handle those well. Looking at the document, notice that I've got a blank line at the top. I don't want that, and I've got these totals calculated at the bottom. I don't want either one of those things in this file because I want this to be uh, tidy data as we've talked earlier in this series of videos. So let me clean that up. So here we've cleaned up the data. The top row is really a header and that bottom row with the totals has been removed. So there's the same raw data that was available uh, on the website. I'm going to save that back on top of the same file that it came from. So there's the file that we just edited. We want to be able to get that file into R, so let me start up R. Here's an R console. Um, let's uh, get the working directory and notice that it is not the directory that we've got this stored in so I need to set the working directory to uh, to be um, where the file so there we're setting the working directory to be where our file is and let's just look and see what's in that directory notice there's this other file that you might have seen in another video and then this this uh, file that we downloaded and prepared it ready to be read into uh, to R. We're going to use the read comma separated variable command and remember that in most cases you can just come to something like that and copy that and paste that name in and there we are we're ready to read that. Now what we want to do though is actually store that information in a, an object that we will call SAS for S San Antonio Spurs and so we'll read that in and store it in that that object. So here in the background you can see the uh, web page that we were looking at before and we can see what each one of those headings are and we can uh, and we've created this SAS. Notice that if we look at the structure of SAS that that will give us the uh, the rank, the player, the age, the, the those are the headings that we're looking for in this data set. Now I'm particularly interested at this particular moment in the in the personal fouls and the points scored. So I'm going to build an object called personal fouls and remember in this uh, data frame I can use square brackets and say let's not make any restrictions on the rows but let's just look at the things that are in the personal foul column okay because that's what that personal foul is 
is capital P capital F. So now I've got this uh, vector that is the list of the personal fouls, and I'd like to have uh, something called points. So I'll use SAS, the, the same strategy again, no restrictions in the rows, but the points scored by the individual players. So now I've got those two, those two uh, objects. If you want to look at points, there they are. Uh, the points for each of the, the players. Let's plot the, uh, the personal fouls on the x-axis and the points on the y-axis. So there's that data. Now how interesting. Look, there seems to be a real correlation here between the number of personal fouls made and the points scored. Now we can do some more things with this. Let's, uh, let's look at them just real quickly. We can add a regression line to this kind of a, of a plot in R by using AB line. That's going to add a line to the plot that we already made. We're look, going to look at the linear model of the points being predicted by the personal fouls. And that produces, adds this line to that. That's the regression line. It's, it's not a real tight correlation here, but there definitely is a, a correlation here. So maybe as a, as a coach, we could, could say, okay, players, go out there and just start committing personal fouls because there's this correlation between the personal fouls and the points that are scored. Well, of course, you recognize that as being ridiculous. This is a, there's got to be a confounding uh, variable here somewhere. That's it, the, the personal fouls is not the cause of the points scored. There must be something else that ca that's causing personal fouls and the number of points that are scored. You might think about that and try and decide what it might be. Okay, so there we are. We've shown an example of, of looking at some data that's online, uh, downloading that data, processing the data so that it's, so that it's tiny data, so that it's tidy data, and then being able to get that into R and, and looking at some interesting facts associated with it. Okay.